right. This is Ronaldo Moore with PPG back again with another informative video. I am coming to you this evening from my basement. It's where I do a lot of my my reading, a lot of my studying. Um, I'm always reading different books, different cold books, studying for different exams, taking online seminars. I'm always doing something. So it's a never ending cycle. But this video that you're about to watch, I uh, put together some video clips. These are things that I are some of the things that I look for when I am doing a residential building final based on the 2018 IRC or manufacturers installation instructions. <laughs> I have to say that, man, I, I get more comments about stuff that I'm posting is wrong or, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's why I always post, I always include the book that I'm referencing. And I also post or try to include the code section. So if you're not using these books that, well, you know, 2018 RC, um, 2020 NEC, if you're not using any of these books, um, my videos may not be applicable to where you are. Um, but those that are using these books, um, definitely I would, even if you're not using these books, these books, I still would like for you to watch, but they may not be applicable to what you're doing on a day to day basis. Um, so whatever cold book that your city or state or jurisdiction has adopted, definitely get familiarized, definitely get familiar with that book. Um, especially when it deals with new construction. Um, when you're doing inspections on a new on new construction, the code book should be your your foundation, should be your basis, man. That, that's very, very, very important. I know a lot of inspectors that let's see, how can I say this nicely? Um, that really only focus on cosmetic issues. Um, which is fine if it has to do with existing construction. But when you're dealing with new construction, it's critical that your your foundation, that your basis be a cold book. This is I mean, you have everything in this, man, you know, from, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and that should be your foundation, whatever book it is. It, it is. It is the RRC, if it's the uniform, the national code book, NEC. When you're dealing with new construction, it's critical that that want that one of these books should be your foundation, should be where you start. So this video that you're about to watch, like I said, there's some video clips. It's based on the IRC. Um just, just some of the things that I look for when I'm doing a residential building final. Um, it's part one. I'll include part two, part three um, down the road <laughs> when I put them together. Uh, but I hope you guys get something out of this. And remember, it's you when you're dealing with new construction, please, please, Familiarize yourself with a code book. You know, it doesn't have to be the IRC, whatever code book that your state has adopted. Familiarize yourself with that. Let that be your foundation when you're doing an inspection on new construction. And with that, I think I've said enough. Uh, <laughs> hope you guys get something out of this, and I will see you again on the next one. All right, let's talk stairs, stair risers and treads. Max height on a stair riser is seven and three quarter inches. Minimum tread depth for a stairway is 10 inches. That's minimum. And it can't be more than three eighth inch difference for the whole stairway. So that riser up near the top can't be six inches 
and the one right here at eight inches. They won't work. And while we're at it, let's talk about the handrails. Handrails are required on one side of a stairway. On commercial, they're required on both sides. The height of a handrail can range between 34 and 38 inches. And they must terminate back into the wall on both ends. And the area from the handrail to the wall is at an inch and a half. The exterior guardrail, minimum height of a guardrail is 36 inches. The opening between the pickets are balusters. Any opening can't be larger than four inches. And as far as the fasteners, you can have two nails per end or one screw. Those two nails, two nails or one screw, one screw. I am doing a final on a renovated home and I'm checking the, to see if they need a guard rail at this front porch. And if it's higher than, than 30 inches. And it is, they need a guard rail at this front porch. So any deck that's higher than 30 inches off the ground a guardrail is required. They're also missing drip edge, new asphalt, shingle roof, require drip edge at the eaves and gables. So, first of all, make sure that the address, address numbers are posted on either the mailbox or the house itself. Make sure that the treads and the risers are the correct depth and height. Um, max seven three quarter for a riser, minimum 10 inches depth for the tread. And there's at least one graspable handrail on one side of the guard rail. Make sure there's insulation in the attic area. And if the insulation is blown in, that insulation certificate stating the R value should be posted as well. And the attic door is insulated as well. Needs to be insulation down in the crawl space, the floor of the ceiling of the crawl space area, which is the floor of the interior and a six mil vapor barrier down on grade. Smoke alarms in every bedroom can't be within four inches to the corner going horizontal or vertical. Uh, max 12 inches down from the wall. That's it and they all have to be interconnected. And a smoke alarm outside of the bedroom area as well. And let's not forget the anti-tip bracket behind the stove. I am doing a building final on a condo, brand new. I was in the process of checking the stairs here for the for the height of the risers when I came across this little area here on this stairway, which looked a little suspect. The minimum headroom area above a stairway is six foot eight inches. That looked a little suspect, so I decided to pull out my tape measure and kind of measure it. So Took my tape measure here and it's down on that tread. I can get it, get it right. There we go here. And I'm looking at about six foot four inches. So minimum headroom above a stairway, six foot eight inches. 
they are short about four inches. So they need to come back and bump that up to meet the six foot eight inch headroom area. And there you have it. Just some of the things that I look for when I am doing a residential building final. Hope you guys got a little something out of this. And look out for part two. That should be come very, very soon. So I will see you again on the next one. <laughs>